Hello, this is probably the last video I'll be able to get in before the um, start of the Christmas holidays when things become harder to do. And for this one I'm continuing to use material from our book Towards a New Socialism and I'm focusing in on the section which discusses who would benefit from socialism. And the basis for looking at this is to ask how much value do workers create per hour. We estimated that in 1987 an hour's labour produced goods and services worth about £7.50. And this meant that if you had payment in terms of labour money, that is to say if people were credited with labour credits equivalent to the number of hours they did and bought things that contained the same number of hours, then the equivalent hourly rate of pay, if you translated it into capitalist money, would have been £7.50 in 1987. How did we calculate this? Well, I, I reproduced there the, the table we had in the book we worked out what the net national product is, that is to say the gross national product less capital consumption. We worked out how many hours labour were performed per year and divided the national product by the hours labour per year to see how much value was added per worker per hour and came to, to just over £7.50. That was a slight underestimate because we assumed everyone was a full-time worker which is not accurate but those figures are all a bit old what would it amount to now well here are some updated figures worked out in exactly the same way there are some significant changes since the 1980s the the mean weekly paid hours have fallen quite a lot and the number of employees has gone up a great deal in Britain from 25 million to 32 million. And obviously the value produced per hour has also gone up a great deal. It's now around 33 pounds an hour that a British worker creates, 33 pounds an hour. That's 2018 figures. Now, Given that the median hourly pay is 13, was £13.99, say £14, it means that for at least 50% of workers purchasing power, sorry, for 50% of workers, purchasing power would rise by at least 138%. The blue area is what the median worker gets paid at the moment. The red area is the increase they would get if a social system of pay was in place. Now, this all seems very radical, but it was actually in the original Labour Party programme to give the workers by hand and brain the full fruits of their labour. And that's the scale of increase in workers' wages that would be involved if the Labour Party's old Clause 4 was actually implemented. Now, obviously not everyone gets the, the median wage. And in our book we, we broke it down into male and female workers, manual, non-manual workers, um, and broke down it into quartiles not just get the median so we had the lowest 25 percent the next 50 percent and the 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 the, the further 70 lowest 75 percent and when we looked at that the the value created per week was around 300 pounds and only the top 25 percent of male non-manual workers were paid more than that. 
they were therefore the only identifiable group that would lose out for, from a, a socialist system of pay. And firstly, being male, you halve the numbers, so that's at most 12%. 12 then you knock off all the manual workers, so probably not more than 7% or something would have um, lost out. Certainly a very small minority, and as is still the case. Well, I couldn't find an equivalent breakdown by manual, non-manual, male and female. The current um, government statistics give earnings by the bottom 10%, the next 25%, the 50%, 25% and the top five top 10%. So, and if you then take the adjustment for the change in the working week and the change in the value created, it is just over a thousand pounds, a thousand pounds and thirty, thousand and thirty pounds or something, um, that is created per worker per week. And even the top ten percent of workers. Um, less than the top 10% of workers would earn more than that since only 10% earn more than a thousand pounds a week so again we get the the result that probably only about 7% uh, or so of people would lose out if you had a socialist rate of pay well over 90% would benefit from Marxist distribution principles. The vast majority will see huge benefits from abolishing surplus value. So much of what workers create is effectively being stolen from them. So that if we could abolish profit, interest and rent, almost all workers would be better off. And this is the basic message of Marxist economics. It's the basic message of Marxist economics which is so subversive and which the establishment doesn't want heard. And here's a challenge to you, to, to viewers. Apply this method to your country. Look at the national statistics to work out how much value is being added by an hour's labour in each of your countries. Work out how much workers where you are would benefit from socialism. then produce leaflets and fly posters explaining this because this is the basic method message of marxist economics beyond everything else this is the basic message and this is the message you have to put across produce paper posters something like this is it well this is an idea uh, the average british worker creates 33 pounds wealth an hour how much do they pay you? Who's getting the rest? That's actually based on a poster that the Workers' Party of Scotland was putting out in the 1990s. In those days, the figure was £10 an hour and the artwork was different. It was done by someone with, with greater artistic skill than me. But that is a basic key propaganda point you should be putting it out. You should be agitating on the basis of this. Translate the abstract principles of Marxist economics into terms that everyday people can understand. This is the kind of message that John McLean got huge audiences listening to in Glasgow before the First World War. This is the basis on which the socialist movement was built up in the early 20th century this basic message about exploitation.